Getting the black pieces, facing e4. Gonna be going for the Rhapsodic Karo Khan. And let's see what opponent has in store for us. It's actually been a while since we faced the advance. So it looks like we have the classical variation where I think the easiest setup to learn and also quite effective long term is just to go for the Tarda cover. And of course, taking uh, with an e pawn, keeping a safer king. And when they play bishop d3, I think taking the pawn is good enough. I know white is going to be getting some compensation after knight f3. So could also do something like taking there, knight e7, knight f6. But I think we're just going to play it like the most principal fashion, pick up the pawn and just go back with a queen. I think that's what I would normally do. Still does not take. I think we just take and go for the queen trade. Extra pawn in the end game should be quite promising. Just knight d7, I think. Preparing knight f6. Pretty common and standard idea. Hitting the bishop and developing. So let's see, I might have like same game like this. I think bishop f4, knight f6, bishop c7 might have happened in one of my older games. I don't really remember. Maybe in like the previous car or kind of reading like that with it. But I think I'm just like kind of hallucinating. It can't be that. But I think I had a strange game like this at some point. Uh, okay, can I just go knight f6? That's what I would like. Okay, bishop c7, we just have bishop g4. So that's not really a great move, I think. And... Now we just do this, threatening to take and double up white's pawns, which is going to be pretty terrible. D6, preparing to develop the dark squared bishop. In case of h3, we could also take, I know giving up the bishop pair is not ideal, because he will get some potential play on the queen side, maybe try to open up the bishops, but we could also keep the bishops on with bishop h5. So let's see. We see rook d2. Can just continue development, preparing castle, and then play rook d8. Trade all the pieces. We're having an extra pawn. We want to trade everything. Just this. Preparing to play rook to d8 on the next move. Bishop d6 could be an interesting line for him now. Just sort of avoiding my rook d8 plans, but we can just exchange bishops. Maybe <laughs> take on f3 as well there. So, okay, against h3, taking and rook d8 is an option, but I would probably just keep this. If he plays g4, it's kind of weakening, just there, and knight d5 ideas. Now hitting the bishop f4 square is pretty juicy after this move is. Played. Okay, 95. How about this? Hitting the bishop. If bishop back, I'm considering bishop g5. Hitting the rook. Taking with the f pawn doesn't make much sense because e6 will be weak. Expecting him to be. Uh, yeah, just playing back. And then maybe something like, okay, bishop e5. Now I'm still like inclined to go bishop f6, just trying to trade as many things as we can. Could also be playing rook fd8 with idea to meet c4 with knight somewhere in exchange. Like knight f6. Yeah, they just bring the rooks. Could have done that as well, but... I think just going for the file is a little bit more important here, trying to stay as active as we can. Just knight back. Idea to simply take. <laughs> if we could trade everything, that would be kind of a dream scenario. I think the most drawing chances that he has is while keeping rooks on the board because... Uh, yeah, okay, the rooks and games are like the most drawish ones. 
I don't really mind going against the bishop pair because I think we can slowly shut down one of white's bishops and eventually trade it. So yeah, bishop f3, just take, go rook d8. I don't even mind taking and him taking on f6 because it's going to be like opposite colored bishop endgame. Maybe objectively a draw, but pretty tough to hold, I would say. Maybe could even consider taking with the G pawn. That may lead to interesting structure, pushing f5. It's definitely very one-sided endgame there, so you should be looking forward to play such positions. Of course, if you're like maybe playing a game where you have more time to consider the resulting endgames, you can decide whether you want to keep rooks or not, whether that may provide better winning chances or not, but it looks like he's not really threat threatening to like doesn't even want to trade this is i think better for us because we can just keep the knight and avoid those like sort of drawing scenarios still he wants b5 which is a pretty annoying threat and then his bishop becomes kind of a monster if i could somehow exchange this bishop that would be amazing. I don't quite see a way though. And he might not even be worse, believe it or not, because he's just going to be pushing b5 super quick. So like this. b6. He has bishop c6. Wait, so... Bishop f5 here takes takes. Bishop e5 takes takes. Bishop b7, knight c4. Okay, that can't be good. And b6, bishop c6, bishop e5. That might be playable. Still kind of dull, but it is what it is. <laughs> I'm just threatening to do this, by the way, and we exchange bishops, we're winning, but he has this move that's kind of problematic. We'll have to take, and then play b6, and then on bishop c6, I'm counting on bishop e5. Vision Zug, bishop takes, bishop d6, and I'm going to be up a pawn there. Hope to somehow get some winning chances, although it's probably just a draw. Gonna be an interesting endgame though. If he doesn't play b5, I think should be getting very good winning chances. He is not pushing b5. That is super surprising to me. His bishop here try to exchange. If he keeps, that's probably best, but still like a little bit suspicious to me. Maybe f6, king f7. How about f5? Just like f5 maybe. Gaining a bit of space. If he takes, we're happy to undouble the pawns. But he would probably do something like this. But then king f7. Okay, just bring the king. Bishop d8. Okay, I think we should be winning this one. He is definitely giving me so much time to coordinate my pieces. And he's not like trying to force a draw. I don't know why he is not. So now I'm considering this move, b5 and just like knight e5. bc6, I could take both with the pawn or with the knight. Both are tempting. Also kind of cutting down his king. There's no king d3 because the knight covers it. <laughs> yeah, that has to be played and now it's like big decision time. So 
I think we could very much do this because we are forcing bishops off. Like he either takes or we play knight d4 and we take there. That's probably just winning. Taking this way still allows him maybe bishop g2 and that's drawish. But after this, we're kind of forcing bishops off, which should be close to winning, I would say. Keep in mind, not only attacking the bishop, but also preparing that knight jump. Okay, opponent definitely taking some time. It's interesting because he played it pretty fast while he had a good position and... Now, when the sort of evil was made, I'd be a little bit too late, tank. So he takes, which I think is good, because at least he's messing up my pawns. It's like good from his point of view as the defender, but we've got an extra pawn. Do not forget, we're four against three. That's definitely should count for something. Still not obvious whether we can create a passer or not. Like if this pawn was not doubled, would have been an easier win. This maybe still objectively a draw. Maybe. Probably objectively a draw. Realistically speaking. Okay, make that move. The pawn is bit vulnerable there. He would have played bishop e3 and attacked it anyways. Now bishop e3, maybe just king e7. Which was not a move in this position. Would be something if we could win this. I think it's definitely just a dead draw. I was kind of enthusiastic about it, but to me it feels like it should be easily holding, but I'm not sure what he's trying to do. Is he trying to get to my pawns? That's not the way to make the draw. Let's hit this. Is he going to push f4? That's going to give him a weak pawn. Maybe bishop e3, e5. So if he plays f4, I think he lost it. And f4 is a very tempting move in this position. f3 is maybe a draw, but then e5, e4 and create a passed pawn at least. So, okay, I think we're in the driver's seat now. Things have changed. He shouldn't have allowed this. Maybe he can still go back and stop me from promo from pushing the pawn. Yeah, now this is definitely much better for me. There was absolutely no reason for him to allow such thing, like, ever. Now, these pawns are, like, cancelling each other, and we have the extra pawn. So, we should definitely be winning, I think, now. Even objectively, practically as well, because he's got no time on the clock. Still need to be a bit careful. I'm thinking about trying to bring the king to c5. That should be generally good enough. Yeah, just king d6. If bishop e3, king c5 wins. Yep. Now should definitely be fairly easy. Gonna be picking up another pawn. So, yeah, crazy. Opponent did everything he could to lose this endgame. If we looked at uh, if we look it up at the beginning, I believe there this should have been like pretty much a dead draw. But um, he for some reason with this a6 move, I kind of debated his him into thinking that he should bring the king there, which was like an absolute mistake. Of course, when I played a6, I had no such intention. I'm like, just glad it happened, but, you know. If we're looking at this position, it should definitely be very flat. Like, not here. I'm talking about, like, after bishop uh, here. Yeah, this should definitely be dead draw. Now, I was better if I was mistake, apparently... Still pretty close all the time. Apparently bishop f6 and e5 is better. Yeah, this should have been what I should have gone for with e4. That's clearly better. Instead, I played 
pretty weak. Kind of overestimated this position. I thought it should be a very good winning chance, but I think it's just a dead draw after deeper consideration. And believe it or not, A6 won the game because he's for some reason his brain went insane thinking that somehow he's going to be able to bring the king there. But whenever he wants that, I can at the very least play bishop B6 or push the e pawn like in this case. And now this felt like a book win. Probably it's not because he has bishop F4. Hello for chess, but also cute accent. <laughs> it's not cute. Come on. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah. Well. To me, it's crazy. He's got many drawing modes. Basically, everything draws. If he stays there, but okay, at this point, very tough to like figure it out. Uh, all right, getting another black game. Opponent opens up with e4. Time to go for the. Karo Khan, looks like it's gonna be an exchange, I was about to say, but we get this kind of strange version of the advance. So normally people would be playing d4 and then d5, e5. That's how you would be getting the advance, where I recommend c5. But when they are playing it in this move order, I think bishop g4 is the best reply. Uh, they either go d4 or h3 now. Whenever they play h3 in the advance, we take the knight. And now common mistake that low-rated players do is just pushing c5 here, trying to play like a gambit. Because they have used this inaccurate move order with knight f3, we actually have the luxury to just play e6 and not even need to gambit the pawn because we're just preparing to get it on the next move. I said earlier, h3 in the advance, we always take on f3 because we're fighting for the d4 square. We just now start putting pressure on it with this c5 move. Can take or just play knight c6 i guess this is better bc knight e5 could be a move bishop d3 simply take on d4 and we win a pawn plays bishop b5 i guess just trying to pin me but can take on c3 Now, do I want to play knight g e7? I think that feels natural. Not sure I want to do something like bishop c5. I think we do knight e7 first, making sure this is well defended. And then we might be looking forward to one pin with a6. Okay, when bishop g5 happens, we can do this. And bishop h4. I think you need to do like queen b6 move. Unpinning and preparing this. If he takes, I'm happy. It just helps me developing. Just goes castle, knight f5, hitting the bishop and making room for this guy to develop. Also, we might be threatening knight e4, so keep that in mind. Could still take intermezzo, it's not like a big deal, but just an idea that you want to be aware of. And taking when the pawn feels pretty nice, making this feel a little safer. And we could take, we don't really have to, because then he takes with the queen and it's going to be pretty tough to develop the bishop because pawn will be hanging. So just bishop e7 looks fine to me. Castle short. Just try to finish development, keep it very simple. Normally this knight on f5 is stronger than the dark squared bishop. Just because this bishop's not like having many squares and this is usually putting pressure in the center. Sitting my queen. I could just play queen before and attack it. I think that feels the most natural. B3. Good castle. Then C5. C5, C4 could now be a nice idea. Trying to undermine the knight. The bishop is like so out of the game on G3. He's just like not really doing much. 
just push. If a3, just go back. So okay, he realized that, he realized that the bishop is was not amazing there. Um, knight d4 will probably be met by queen e3. Really want to push. Maybe we can prepare it for a bit. There's no need to rush with it, really. G4, just knight d4. G4 is not really achieving much, but simply creating additional weaknesses. Okay, against a3, we can't take the pawn because it's covered by the queen, so keep that in mind. Queen e4 would be kind of messing up my structure, which I don't love. So perhaps playing queen back would be nice. I think we'll do it really backwards. Keeping an eye on the pawn. So against this sort of same queen e3 kind of thing, I guess. C4 is no longer that appealing because he takes in my uh, the rook, hits my queen. Can we play queen a8 and then <laughs> maybe do that? It's a little odd. And just a5. Nice move, keeping an eye on this square. Still kind of tough for white to like really make any moves if you think about it. Like, let's say bishop d2 hitting this pawn with already low z5 pawn. So he goes uh, rook e1. Now, still knight d4 is always kind of tempting. I think just maybe playing. Hmm, queen a7, that's kind of an ugly move. Queen a7 just preparing sort of c4. But it's not that bad. Making sure we're no longer pinned. Will he commit and go g4? We'll see, I think that's like only giving us more targets. And okay, he does go bishop d2 now using that idea, but now we're protected, so we could do c4. One takes, rook takes, knight b6. And there could be rook c2 hitting his bishop. I think we like that. Also, open up a nice diagonal for the queen. Hitting the knight. So against knight b6, I could like really play rook c6 and try to like just get rid of that knight immediately. Maybe we should do that. Shouldn't really allow these kind of pieces to cement in our position. Although rook c2 with bishop c5, I have to say, looks very juicy as well. Like here he's going to have to make this move. Bishop c5, what is he playing? Like knight a4? It's like we should be having tactics there, but maybe we don't. Maybe just bishop d4 there. Yeah, let's do rook c2. I think even better than rook c6. Perhaps I forgot about queen d3 as a move. Yeah, I think that was maybe a mistake that I did. I'll have to just go back. It's not a disaster, but it's definitely a, an inaccuracy. Maybe I could also try rook a2. That's like feeling a bit meh. I don't want to like give up the c file and I just want to get rid of this knight basically. So, okay, opponent taking some time for sure. Queen e3 is best, just defending and attacking. This is now the move I was kind of hoping for because we have double attack and attack on f2. So, I got super lucky with that. He just made my move a brilliant move. Like, that's usually what happens with bad moves. If you, like, don't punish them, they become good moves. So, I think it's exactly what happened here.
Now it just seems to me that we're winning big. Either F2 or the knight. Bishop E3, but just take it and then collect the free knight. Nothing special. Extra bishop. Weak pawns. Okay, target the e3 pawn. Take you with the bishop, push d4. Take you with the rook, that's also fine. Am I gonna publish a chessable course on the Karu Khan? Well, that's sort of an idea, even though I haven't like really signed any contract or that or anything. Maybe in the future, if you guys like really want it. Thing is, there are already some good Karokan courses already, but I could definitely come up with like my own things that have not been covered. Like, I've got ideas for that. But we're gonna be having a Scandinavian course pretty soon. Like a Scandi Gambit. Which is actually pretty lit. <laughs> it's coming up in like seven weeks. Something like that. By the time we're recording. Okay, is opponent like tanking or just left the game? Looks like he was tanking. Let's exchange rooks. Scandi and Caro are related. I don't really see how they are related, to be honest. Like, maybe related in a way that you get that pawn structure if you play, like, classical variation and then you play bishop f5. But other than that, I don't know. It's not that related. <laughs> Problem with the Scandi in general is that you kind of get made it, but... Uh, that's why I'm giving the Scandi Gambit. It gets more fun, refreshing. Some ideas that are going to be like very new and I think very effective and fun to play. Some stuff that I discovered with Lila, for sure. Just want to go for the mating net here. Plus, in lower ETD lows, people are like so bad against the Scandinavian. It's insane. You play e4, d5, they go e5, or they play knight c3, or you play d3, whatever, they don't even take it. It's insane. Like a lot of people after e d c6, when we play the gambit, they just don't accept it. And I'm also covering the exchange variation of the Karo Khan. Okay. Rook c8, idea to get it to c1, and then mate on h2. Okay, what is my beautiful mate? I think here we do something like take on h3 at some point. Oh no, he's gonna push. Should have taken that into consideration, but I think we've got to win. Got a nice little geometrical motif. Learn my geometrical motifs from Maurice Ashley, so. <laughs> Let's see. Just kidding about like the Maurice Ashley part. It's just that he released a Jezebel course recently on that. I mean, endgame is an endgame. <laughs> I guess I'll stop his pawn. 
push this guys <laughs> okay opponent fighting gonna get four queens Never mind, just gonna be getting the checkmate. So, uh, was a winning endgame for a while, indeed. Uh, I was just like winning from like the beginning since he blundered the pawn. That's like so common, though. They they play they do this all the time in lower rating games. Instead of playing bishop d3, he's supposed to go like bishop e3, but I think we're like already better, so something like that. Uh, so yeah, this, this is just like not a great line for white. When it goes e4, just gonna be trying out the Karo Khan and first time during the series we're facing the Pseudo Panov. Just like a Panov, but a bit of an improved version, if you'd ask me. But Bishop c4 is not like so great. Knight c3 or Queen a4 line would be tricky. Just gonna be taking against this against knight c3. There's like easy line with takes, but I'm just gonna play like I would normally do against the pawn off. Hopefully, we're gonna get like some kind of transposition. There's knight c6, bishop e7, castle. Try to keep it simple. Alright, opponent taking some time. For some reason, uh, I don't know, they stop like here for 40 seconds. This is like... <laughs> this is usually the most obvious sign that they are like synchronizing the position usually when somebody thinks in like such a, you know, position where you can play whatever. They think for like 40 seconds and then they start playing. Like what, do you think they are like trying to remember prep or anything in this position? So weird and dumb. I know what's gonna happen, man. I'm... <laughs> KC was needed 1 minute 20 seconds to play knight f3 and now white will start uh, all of a sudden playing faster and... <laughs> We'll see. I'll probably just need to play instantly just to give myself a chance this game. Okay, another weird position to tank. <laughs> Preparing to castle against no matter like what he plays other than taking on d5. Oh, this guy's making no moves. They don't want to play chess anymore. Jeez. Um, Yeah, this guy's like not even making any moves. What to say about cheating? Like he's not playing at all. <laughs> this is bad. It's just like 
wasting so much time. Okay, he finally finds rookie one. That is interesting. It's gonna get interesting. Now he's gonna start playing fast once again. This guy literally wants to suck the life out of me by just uh, staying one minute per every move and losing time. I'm just trapped in this game. Oh my god. Okay, this is just ridiculous. Still no moves, like this game just makes no sense. Wasting my, uh, my and your time. <laughs> Come on. Wait, now he woke up. Now he's alive. Interesting. Okay, he started making common sense moves all of a sudden and pretty fast, so. Don't know what to expect. Okay, calm down. Grishuk's more for count. <laughs> Probably not. Just preparing to double up. Okay, need to not play very risky because with this guy you never know. <laughs> It'll be funny if he flags me. Do you want me to close the stream? <laughs> Take that. Okay, that's free win. Just a free win for us. Why is he like struggling to play this? Just need to play fast against these guys, that they are like very unpredictable. Oh, he makes a move. Nice. Ah, he doesn't give me the rook. But he blunders, but he's not.
Bishop e3, d4 I want to play. I think we need to, d3, f3, not so clear. This would be like hella cute. Too bad it's not working. <laughs> I've got to play this. Okay, rook d7 is not a move I would have guessed. Very bad. All right, dude, chill out. Relax. Relax. <laughs> All right, strangest game that I've ever played, but we got the win. And hell no, I'm not going to rematch you. The strangest game that I've ever played.